It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl. Today, a middle school edition. We'll be testing scientific IQs. Test your own and play along with us today. Let's meet our teams first. From Drew Freeman, our first contestant, Joshua Dayrit, Daryl Harper, and Cortez Logan. And from William Wart Middle School, we welcome to our program, Cameron Burton, Joshua Camacho, and Alan Carpenter. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to the difficulty of the questions. On the left are the easier questions worth five and 10 points. The tougher ones worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest question of them all in each of those categories. We start our teams out with 50 points apiece, no penalties ever for incorrect answers. At the end of the two rounds, we will have a competitor for Hyattsville, and then perhaps the third of our four semifinalists moving on to this year's ultimate competition. Let's make sure everything works properly. Let's go to the red team. Daryl, try your buzzer, please. Thank you, good luck to you, to Joshua and to Cortez. And Joshua, would you try your buzzer, please? The green team looks like it's ready and rare to go. Cameron and Joshua and Alan, are we ready? A little weak. Let's try it again. Are we ready? Yes. That's what I want to hear. Okay, we go alphabetically D before W, so Drew Freeman, Daryl, start the game. Give me a category and a number, please. Physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15. Physical for 15 points. Teams, the 12 signs of the zodiac are actually these groups of stars with geometric shapes. Drew Freeman? Constellations. Constellations. Constellations is the right answer. All right, first blood from the red team. Thank you, Joshua, for your assist on that. Daryl, you choose. That's your choice. Uh, science pop potpourri for five. Science potpourri for five points. Teams, a rare butterfly recently hatched this summer in England. It was called a gonandromorph, which meant it was half male and half what? William Wirt? Female. Female, yeah. Had both sexes in one body there. Go green. Uh, science potpourri for 10. Potpourri for 10 points. Teams, Mr. Borglum, who was the sculptor of the faces on Mount Rushmore, he used a pick and an axe, but he mostly sculpted with this explosive that was invented, Drew Freeman. TNT. TNT or dynamite, absolutely, by Alfred Nobel. Good. Red. Uh, Dateline Science for 10. Dateline Science for 10 points. Teams, on the day we are taping this science bowl, Earth is experiencing a near miss. Daryl? Asteroid. An asteroid is coming whizzing by, and we hope we live to tell about it. It's going to be coming close to the moon, but not close to us, but too close for comfort. Good. Red. Uh, zoo Parade for five. Zoo Parade for five points. Teams, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton was talking recently in Pakistan about the terrorists that live in that country, and she said, if you keep these kinds of serpents in your backyard, Drew Freeman, Snakes. Yes, sir. Snakes, that's right. If you keep snakes in your backyard, nothing says they're only going to bite your neighbors. Good. Red, go. Uh, green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Botanically speaking, this V-initialed word is only used as an adjective and never a noun, as when your mother says, eat your what's? 
Williams. What? Vegetables? Vegetables, that's right. Vegetables. Vegetative is an adjective. It is never used as a noun, botanically speaking. We humans do that, though. Go green. Zoo parade for 10? Zoo parade for 10 points. Teams, Lassie, the TV character, did for collies what Rin Tin Tin did for this breed of dog. Drew Freeman. I think it's a retriever. Retrievers. Not retrievers. No good try. Rin Tin Tin did for this breed of dogs what Lassie did for collies, William Wirt. Come on, Cameron and Alan, help out the poor guy in the center there. Pitbulls? What's that? Pitbulls? Not pitbulls. German Shepherds. German Shepherds. Rin Tin Tin was a German Shepherd. Try again, green. Uh, green. Green things for five? Green things for five points, teams. Two part answer. Two part answer. I need both words here. It is appropriate that some of the designer hybrid versions of this Halloween gourd are called Caspers and Full Moons. Two word uh, answer. Drew Caucus. Freeman. What kind? Jack o' lantern. No, sir. William Wirt, Caspers and Full Moons are what kinds of Halloween gourds? White pumpkins, white pumpkins. Casper the friendly ghost and a full moon. White hybrid pumpkins. Try again, green. 65 uh, to 90, you're behind. Uh, let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points, teams. There is now CSI geology, they're calling this. Some volcanologists are worried that there is a volcano in Bolivia that's getting bigger by the day. It's filling up inside with what kind of molten rock? What kind of molten rock, Drew Freeman? Uh, Magma. Magma. You got that right. Yes, sir. Good. Go. Uh, green things with 15. Green things, 15 points. Look at the monitor in the studio, please. We're going back to CSI. Some scientists will be able to tell if a dead body has been in fresh water for a long time by looking at these diatoms, which are a kind of what green plant? <laughs> Drew Freeman. Blowers. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, don't be drinking in just and with no idea. William, what kind of green plant is a diatom? If CSI scientists find this inside of a dead body that has been in fresh water, it gives them an idea how long it's been in there. Algae? Algae, good answer. Yes, sir, that's what I want to hear. Those points you needed, you're back in the game. Go green. Uh, 20 points back. Body systems for 10? Body systems for 10 points. Your question is as follows. If you watch the TV commercial, it says that if you have a science infection, it may not be the, fart, the, the part of the fault of what slimy substance? <laughs> Drew Freeman. Snot. Not snot, not quite. Judges? Yes, they're going to give it to you. All right. <laughs> snot or mucus. All right. This game is quickly de deteriorating here. Let's look at our score. Drew Freeman, 110. William Ward, 80. We'll be back with round two in just a moment. Don't you go away. Hi, I'm actor Jerry Mathers of Leave it to Beaver. Things have changed a lot since the days of black and white TV, but good values and doing the right thing never go out of style. That's why I'm working with the Partnership for Prescription Assistance to help people get the medicines they need. If you are uninsured and struggling, call our toll-free number or visit our website to see if you qualify. It's a free service, a free phone call, and in many cases, your medicines could be free too. Remember, help could be just a phone call away. Diet and exercise are never easy. Then again, neither is dying. Sadly, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and stroke kill nearly a million people a year. Most of these deaths could be prevented. Please, talk to your doctor about your risk for diabetes and heart disease. And if your doctor recommends lifestyle changes or medication, listen. The reason so many die is because not enough are willing to change. You can stop it, starting right now. It's your life. Listen to your doctor. Eat better. Get moving. I always thought being a good mother meant raising my baby myself. But when I got pregnant, I realized I wasn't ready to be a parent. So I did something I thought I could never do. 
I chose adoption. It was really hard. But I know my baby is with a loving family and has a very bright future. Sometimes choosing adoption is being a good mother. Visit us at ichooseadoption.org. Hey, welcome back to Science Bowl. Nice to have you with us today. Thank you for spending time with us. This is a middle school Science Bowl program. Six outstanding young men playing our game. Some have been here before. Let's find out about each of our contestants. Let's go to Drew Freeman first. And Daryl, you're in the lead. You're doing a nice job. Tell me, how did you prepare for Science Bowl? What you guys do? Uh, we really didn't prepare, for real. You didn't prepare, so you're doing this uh, off the cuff here today. Tell me about your school. Who's your principal? Uh, Dr. Dane. All right, and who's the sponsor of your team? Mr. Your Warren. Mr. Warren, okay. And I know he sent me a list of about 17 students who supposedly were trying out for this team here, and I know you've got some alternates here, don't you? Or at least one. Who yeah. do you have, Daryl? Uh, Dante Van Hook. All right, we'll bring Dante out and Mr. Warren in just a few moments' time. Uh, tell me about yourself. What do you want to do someday? Uh work with exotic animals. Yeah, we were talking about your interest in uh, being a veterinarian someday and maybe working like at the National Zoo, uh, uh, maybe uh, working on a tiger or a giraffe someday. That's pretty cool. And you have a dog at home, yeah? And what other kind of pets? Ball python. Yeah, that python you got there too. All right. Cortez, nice to see you back. You played on the Magnolia team once before. Uh, so this isn't new to you and your experience counts. You're doing a nice job. Tell us about yourself. You like to uh, do computer programming, don't you? Yeah, computer, <coughs> computer programming, like engineering, stuff like that. Yeah. Always, uh, my dad says I always like mess with stuff when I'm not supposed to. Like, always like try to figure out what it is, yeah. even when I was little. So um, that made me want to be like an engineer. Exactly. And Take things get, get more into that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes tinkering with things that's that's a great education and. Uh, you're an outstanding young man. Nice to have you back. Josh Shebb, nice to have you with us today, too. Uh, you wanted to be on the show because you thought it would be fun. We hope you're having fun. What do you want to do someday? Uh, I want to be a mechanical engineer and a part-time teacher. Part-time teacher. I like that. You know, and uh, what would you teach? Uh, algebra. Algebra. My favorite subject. Cool. All right. So you're, you're a good science student and a good math student. That's just terrific. William Wharton, nice to have you guys with us today. Uh, Alan, nice to see you back. You were in the Rogers Heights team last year. Joshua and Cameron, you're the newbies here. Welcome to our show. Josh, start us out. Tell us who your principal is. Uh, Mr. Christian. There are one. That's great. I know he's rooting for you. And you had a couple of sponsors, didn't you? Who are they? Um, Miss Reyes and Miss Messina. Good, and they'll be out in a few moments. Do you have any alternates on your team? Uh, Jose. Jose, all right. We'll bring Jose out, and he can meet everybody, too. Joshua, well, you have a, uh, an interesting career aspiration. You want to be a CIA agent, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, how'd you get interested in that? Um, I usually, I usually, my dad is, um, he used to be, uh, he used to work for the mayor when he was um, back in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So I want to be just like him. Wonderful. I'm sure he's very proud of you. Good luck to you. You're doing a nice job. You, you play a nice game. Let me ask you, did you guys prepare for this? Yes. Yeah. How, what'd you do? Um, we took uh, review questions and some science trivia websites online. Wonderful. And you've watched previous programs? Mm -hmm. That's great. All right. Keep it up. Al uh, Alan, nice to see you here. Tell us about your future. What do you see in your crystal ball for um, yourself? I want to be an entertainment software designer. Wow. And uh, so you have a lot in common maybe with Cortez. You like to do a lot of computer programming and all? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you do in your spare time? Um, Play video games, read, and draw. Great. All right. And Cameron, what brings you to us? Why do you want to be on the Science Bowl? So I feel like representing our school. Yeah. So you're kind of the ambassador for William Wirt here today. What do you like about William Wirt, Cameron? What's a really good thing about your school? The teachers. The teachers? Yeah. Like be not born. Some of them not born. Yeah. That's everywhere, you know? It's hard always to be sparkling and entertaining, so uh, uh, teachers have a tough job. And uh, I know that you have some great teachers over there at William Wirt. Uh, let's get back to our game. 80 for William Wirt, 110 for Drew Freeman. Lots of points to give away, some of the tougher questions as well. Daryl, you start us out. You gave us the last correct answer. Uh, body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams on Science Bowl, it can be kind of nervous, but you're not going to get irritable bowel syndrome by being here. But you might get butterflies in your what? <laughs> William Wirt. Stomach? Yeah, butterflies in your stomach. Just a little nervous. Just a little nervous. Go green. 
Zuprade for 15. Zuprade, 15 points. Teams, zebras are now being identified by the same method that we're marking merchandise in grocery stores. Marco. Drew Freeman. Mm -hmm. Marco. Barcodes. Barcodes, yeah, they're taking the stripes on their flanks and they're using those pixels and they're coming up with barcodes for zebras. Thank you, Cortez, for your assist. Go, Daryl. Dateline science for uh, five. Dateline for five points. Teams, President Obama recently had a complete physical and the doctor pronounced him totally free of this noxic carcinogenic weed that he's been trying to kick. Daryl. Tobacco. Tobacco, yeah, he is tobacco free. No more puffing in the secret. Hallways of the White House, Michelle's not going to catch him anymore. Go, Red. Uh, body systems for 15. Body systems, 15 points. Teams, before Stephen Jobs died of pancreatic cancer, he had had a transplant of this three pound organ where bile is produced in your body. William Wirt? Liver. A liver, yes, sir. Good answer, Joshua. Go. Um, You're up to century mark 100. 130 for Drew Freeman. Let's get physical for four, five. Let's get physical for five points. Teams, thank goodness we have better telescopes today because at one time human beings thought there was a man in the what? <laughs> William Wirt? Moon. Moon, yeah, the man in the moon. Kind of looks that, that way, you know, especially if you don't have your glasses on. Go, green. And it's potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 points. Teams, the balloons in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade are filled with what second? Helium. William Wirt? Helium. Helium, the second lightest of the gases. Non-flammable compared to hydrogen. Good. All right, almost a tie score, just 10 behind. Go, Joshua. Uh, Dateline signs for 15. Dateline for 15 points. Teams in the animated movie Land Before Time, Littlefoot was an apatosaurus, and he went from one place to another to find better food. Turns out, Daryl? Uh, wait, um, can you finish the question, please? I, I cannot. Oh. Uh, herbivore? What? Herbivore. Herbivore? Herbivore was a good try. Let me finish for William Ward. Littlefoot, the Apatosaurus in the animated movie Land Before Time, he moved from one place to another along with his friends to find better food. That movement to find better food is known as what? Uh, migration. Migration, yeah, that's what I want to hear. All right, we have all the tough questions left, the 20 and the 25 pointers. This will decide today's game. 135 for Wirt, 130 for Freeman. Good luck, gentlemen. Go, Josh. Thanks for Green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Energy Secretary Stephen Chu says, we human beings can do better than plants. We can build an artificial machine that can conduct this plant process even better than they can. Chlorophyll. Through Freeman. Chlor chlorophyll. Chlorophyll? Not chlorophyll. The name of the process that the plants perform that maybe an artificial machine can do better, William Wirt. Photosynthesis? Photosynthesis, that's right, which uses chlorophyll. All right, William Wirt, go. Uh, Zuprade for 20. Zuprade for 20 points. Teams, look at the monitor in the studio, please. Recently at the American Museum of Natural History, one of the taxidermists decided to give this stuffed collared peccary a rhinoplasty, meaning they had to replace its what? <laughs> Drew Freeman. Nose. Its nose. They gave that pig a new nose. Thank you again, Cortez. All right, that takes you up to 150, just five points behind the lead. Go, Daryl. Uh, Zuparade for 25. Zuparade for 25 points. Team's two-part answer. Birds are divided into five separate groups based on the shape and the size of these two body parts characteristic of birds. Two wings bird parts. And beak. Yes, wings Drew and beaks. Wings and beaks. No, good try. Two parts of the bird that decides what group they belong to. William Wirt. Beaks and tails. Beaks. Pass it to Alan? Yes, sir. Beaks and um, beaks and feet. You got it, beaks and feet. All right. You had us all worried about the there over there. Good job, Alan. You pulled it out. Go, William Wirt. Um, let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points, teams. The ears of many rabbits are so thin you can almost see the light through them which means they are what? They're not transparent. What are they, Drew Freeman? Translucent. Yeah, they're translucent. Absolutely right. Some light gets where you can even see the blood vessels in them. Go red. Nice comeback there. Ten points Body behind. Daryl. Body systems. Body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points. Teams, 
multiple choice question. A lot of times, because so many people suffer heart attacks, they have things called AEDs, which are automated external demagnetizers, detoxifiers, or defibrillators. William Ward. Defibrillators? Defibrillators? Defibrillators, absolutely right. It defibrillates a heart that is shaking and not beating. Good answer. Good. Thank you, Cameron. Go, Joshua. Um, Science potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. Teams, if your STEM fair science experiment had this statement, if you change your sheets and your pillowcases often, it might help people who suffer from acne, what part of the science fair would that be part of? Yes, Joshua. Hypothesis? Yes, a hypothesis. It is a guess that you are now going to test through experimentation. Excellent. Go. Uh, Dateline Science for 20. Dateline for 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. William Rentkin discovered x-rays. In so doing, he won the first ever Nobel Prize. William Hurt. Uh, no. William Rentkin, he discovered x-rays. As a consequence, he won the first ever Nobel Prize in what field of science? Radiology. Good try. Physics. Physics was the correct answer. Try again, green. Uh, green things for 25. Green things for 25. Big one in that category. Teams, in the deep south, in places like Georgia and Florida, they cannot grow tomatoes late in the season because it gets so hot that these reproductive grains are no longer viable. Drew Freeman. Wheat. Starch. Not starch, no. What reproductive grains are no longer viable so you can't grow tomatoes late in the summer in the deep south? Seeds? Close, close. Pollen, pollen. Pollination will not take place when the, s the temperature rises too high. Nice try, both teams. Still 220 to 170. William Wirt, advantage still yours. Let's get physical for 25. Let's get physical for 25 points. Teams, this is almost spooky because this chemical with the symbol, with the formula NAHCO3, you can use it to bake chocolate chip cookies. You can put fires out with it. You can brush your teeth. Daryl? Baking soda. You got that right. Sodium bicarbonate, yeah. Imagine, you can do all those things with it. All right, 180 to 220. Score is changing. You're up to 195. Three questions left. Daryl, you choose. Uh, science potpourri for 25. Science potpourri for 25 points. Teams, if you're looking at something very, very tiny, a light microscope will not do. You need a microscope that needs a stream of these negatively charged subatomic particles. What kind Electrons. of microscope is that? Electrons. Electron microscope, yes, indeed. That's exactly what we wanted to hear. Our score is changing. With that point, though, it's 220 to 220. We have a tie score. We have two questions left in our game. Daryl, you choose. Hmm? Have to get this. Um, Body systems for 25. Body systems for 25 points. Teams, Washington Redskins player Chris Cooley recently had therapy for his knee where they spun these P initial blood components. Patella. Drew Freeman. Hmm? Patella. Patella? Not Patella. Good try. William Word to treat his injured knee. Chris Cooley from the Washington Redskins recently had therapy where they spun these P initial components that are found in blood that help Platelet. blood clot. Platelets? Platelets is what I want to hear. Yes, indeed. Last question of the game. This is the situation. 220 to 245. We could end up with a tie score here. If so, we will go to a sudden death playoff. We'll take a break first. Good luck, teams. Last question of the game worth 25 points. Teams, the U.S. Department of Agriculture has issued a shoot to kill order for the nutria that are eating all of the plants in the Chesapeake Bay uh, wetlands. To what order of mammals does the nutria belong? <laughs> Drew Freeman. Gentlemen, you need something here. I'm afraid I'm going to have to go with William Work. The nutria that are eating all of the plants in the wetland belong to what order of mammals? Mammals? No, rodents. Rodents. They are giant rodents. It makes no difference, William Work. I think you have hung on. We'll double check that score. We'll be back with you in just a moment. Don't you go away. Across America, service learning is helping students improve their grades and their communities. Service learning makes school exciting by connecting the classroom with community service projects. Before service learning, I was just an ordinary student. 
causing mischief during class. After service learning started, I got so involved into it, I started paying attention more, picked up my grades. Okay, very good. Service learning absolutely drives academic success. Working together, students solve real problems, build new skills, and apply their knowledge in a whole new way. The great thing about service learning is it gives you this opportunity to go out into the world and do things hands-on. Inside the classroom and out, service learning opens new doors and brings learning to life. Service learning can make a difference in your school. Visit Learn and Serve America at learnandserve.gov to find out how. I knew I needed help paying for college. I've always wanted to be a teacher. I used to make worksheets for my friends to do. No one ever wanted to come over. My guidance counselor told me about federal student aid, and my mom helped me fill out the free application. I got the grants and loans that made school possible. There is a way to pay for school. You just have to find it. My name is Caitlin. I'm going to be a special education teacher. I'm going to live my dream. For years, scientists have explored remote corners of the Earth, searching for exotic substances that might help prevent cancer. At last, man has discovered a secret place where powerful remedies can actually be found. Medical research shows that a vegetarian diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains can help prevent many types of cancer. Wherever you live, cancer prevention is as close as your grocery store. To learn more, call 866-906-WELL. And we welcome you back to Science Bowl. It doesn't get any closer than this. Just wonderful playing on both teams. Our final tally today is Drew Freeman, 220. William Ward, 245. Congratulations to the green team, Cameron and Joshua and Allen. You can tell they're not excited at all over there. And standing back there, their wonderful alternate at William Ward, Jose Romero and Miss Messina and Miss Reyes. They're very proud sponsors. Congratulations. We'll see you against Hyattsville. Let's see some smiles here. You guys played your hearts out till the very end. Josh Seb and Daryl and Cortez and Dante. Let's see a smile and a nice pat on the back for these guys. Mr. Warren, thank you for all the work you did. Thank you for watching today. We'll see you next time on Science Bowl. Bye-bye.